Hello and welcome to the Lord Fenton Gaming Reviews Ubisoft and Square Enix E3 press conference on day three. I'm your host Lord Fenton. In today's video we're going to go over two uh, press conferences Ubisoft and Square Enix. As always like, comment, and subscribe my channel. Now is either both press conferences worth it? Did one top the other? Let's see we're going to talk about Ubisoft first. Now first off after the nice Assassin's Creed music which was a nice way to start Watch Dogs Legion. Oh my goodness. After post uh, Brett exit, that game is going to be awesome. I love the trailer all. The gameplay was alpha, but you know what? Who cares? What's great about it was you can recruit almost anybody off the street with unique voices. And yes, permadeath happens. If your favorite guy dies or gal, oh well, it's your fault. Still, it's awesome. You can ride drones, quick on the fly hacking. And you get to play an elderly lady. Hopefully there's an elderly gentleman that's a uh, British so I can become bad grandpa in uh, London. Yes. I cannot wait for this game. Hopefully it's really good. Alright, I was thinking, okay, this is a great way to start the show. This was awesome. This was neat. Mythic Quest. A show. Come on. I'm serious. This is a view game conference. You had to put out a freaking show. BORING! Next. Next up was the Rainbow Six Siege uh, Clutch Royale uh, trailer. There's a guy named Warren that looks pretty funny. It looks it looks awesome if you're a Rainbow Siege Six fan. Only disappointment is I wish they showed a little bit of gameplay. Even like 10 seconds, but still. Decent job. Better than Mystic Quest! Now, next up the bat is Adventure Time game. It looks like it's crossed between a brawling side-scroller game and uh, Super Smash Brothers on the side-scrolling. Not bad at all, it's a little bit kiddy, but if you love Adventure Time, well, you probably get it. At this point, the show is wondering, can this game be better or worse? Now, next up is the new uh, Ghost Recon game, uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. They had a CGI trailer for now, however, it's John Berthanol. The same dude who played Shane from The Walking Dead, and a great job of the Punisher. I will admit, I'm not much of a Ghost Recon or a Tom Clancy type of game, but you know what? Any of those people will definitely enjoy the dude right here. John is freaking awesome. If you ever watch the Netflix Punisher series, go watch it. It's pretty awesome. If you watch the first season, two seasons of The Walking Dead, definitely watch it. This was a very good point in the uh, Ubisoft. Uh, E3 press conference, so let's see if they build momentum from that. Now, after a while, they still touch on Ghost Recon Breakpoint. They gave solo action. That means, in other words, uh, if the game uh, just say dies in uh, over a year later for online content, you kept AI to help you out, which was very good. Like I said before, with the uh, initial uh, section, I kind of wish uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint had a gameplay trailer, but still. Not bad feature they added. Next up, they combine all of uh, Tom Clancy characters into a mobile game, including Sam Fisher. Yes, he's coming back in a mobile game, Sam Fisher. I was heavily disappointed in that. I mean, come on! A mobile game here! I know mobile games are popular, but still. I kind of wish Sam Fisher was in a real game. At this point, the show was starting to wear down big time. The next segment was Just Dance. Uh, it was just people dancing, celebrating years of uh, Just Dance. At this point, momentum got screeched to a bloody halt. Yeah, I'm starting to wonder. Did Ubisoft took lessons from the other three conferences I uh, whined about? I think they did, folks. Now, next up is the For Honor event. Now, it kind of brought up slightly a bit more momentum, but however, it was just a CGI trailer about some kind of spirit taker and you just got killed out with those spirit takers it was alright but still at this point I kinda wish there was more uh, gameplay even like 10 second glimpse of it I mean look at Watch Dogs uh, Legion they had great gameplay that was an alpha and that was wonderful now next up the bat was Rainbow Six uh, Quarantine it was a CGI trailer it looked like someone was infected and they were panicking and then they heard the military, so they hit the butt on their wrist to cure themselves temporarily. That doesn't look bad. It might be good for survival horror. If it has survival horror elements in it, I might consider getting my first Tom Clancy uh, game since a long time, since Splinter Cell. Well, I got that free off of uh, NVIDIA card I got one time, but still, not bad at all. 
Now, next up was the uh, Division 2. They're going to have uh, three episode DLCs. They're all going to be outside of Washington. I'm not much of a Division fan. I kind of wish episode 1 they should have showed a little bit of gameplay at least. Instead, they show concept art in a CGI trailer. First one was outside of uh, DC, which looks like it's like fancy buildings so you can ambush people. And look like they're going to bring back raids for you folks on uh, episode 2, which is a Pentagon. And the third one, you're facing a, a former ally turned Emni, which was not bad, but still, like I said, wish there was more gameplay. Now, next up during this announcement, they announced the Division movie with Jessica Chastain. I'm not sure if that's going to be good or not, but still, I hope it is. If not, I'm still wanting that Assassin's Creed sequel. Yeah, probably the only one on YouTube who wants that, but still, not bad. It does need momentum pickup at this point in the show. Now, next up, they're doing their own uh, subscription service, uh, Ubisoft, which is called Uplay Plus, which is uh, early access to hundreds of games, $14.99 a month. And it's going to be on Google's uh, Standia. I was thinking at this point, okay, there's so much subscription services out there. It's just like the TV and movie subscription services. There's too many. It's going to flood the market, and it's going to be so bad when it floods the market that uh, people will actually uh, tune out on. I kind of wish they uh, would have done uh, better on that, but still, I felt like at this point, momentum has died. Now, next up was Roller uh, Champions. It started out as a CGI trailer. At least it did do a little bit of gameplay trailer. It kind of reminds me of the 90s Rollerball uh, movie with Rebecca Romaine Stamos combined with the looks of Fortnite. I was like going, okay, this looks like it's all right. A little bit cheaply made. At this point, you lost uh, momentum from the uh, start of the uh, show's Watch Dogs uh, Legions, which that was a great game. And... Uh, uh, Ghost Recon uh, Breakpoint with uh, John Berthenol. Yeah, at this point in the show, I was like wondering, can it get any better towards the end? Now, next up from the makers of uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey, the developers for that uh, wonderful game, there's a game called Gods and Monsters. It's a damn bloody CGI trailer. It's coming out next year. At least the uh, Watchdog Legions had an alpha footage. It looked cartoony where you're fighting uh, uh, mythical uh, creatures such as the uh, Medusa and uh, more. Overall, I was like disappointed. You end this show on that? What the hell? Come on! Seriously? Here's my uh, final thoughts and the uh, review score I'm going to give it. I'm going to give it a generous 7 out of 10 just because of the Watchdog Legions game and uh, John Berthenol in uh, Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Those were the heavy hitters of the show. There's many little momentums that got picked up and then it got dragged down by the rest of just showing CGI trailers. And then you play subscription services along with so many other subscription services that will probably most likely be uh, burying that pile of subscription services. Yeah, it was a good conference at start and then it went down towards the end and then the what the hell ending of Gods and Monsters. Should have shown at least more gameplay of the games. We got people more hyped up, more interested. And that's it for my uh, Ubisoft uh, E3 press conference review. Now the next section coming up is Square Enix. Did they did better than Ubisoft? Let's find out, shall we? Next up is the uh, Square Enix E3 press conference on day three. After Ubisoft's uh, great start and the uh, decline in the press conference, did Square Enix do well or they did poorly for this press conference? Let's find out with the first game on the list. Now, first up the bat is the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yes, you start the show like this exactly. Square Enix stole the uh, Sony uh, playbook for uh, making E3 conferences great. And believe me, they did a great job. They say it's uh, two Blu-rays this worth of content in there. Uh, the first uh, game starts in uh, Midgard, so if you uh, played the original game from uh, 20 uh, plus years ago, you know what's going on. They did show gameplay. A wonderful job of it. First of all, combat starts out where you hit enemies like normal as Cloud, and if you fill up your ATB mirror, you could use magic or items or uh, certain special moves and more. Now, if you get your limit, you get your buster attacks, and boy, 
they did a great job of the combat system already. I'm like, going, this is great. It definitely brings back that old feeling of Final Fantasy uh, 7, and it's wonderful. And oh my goodness, Barrett. He is even more tactical than uh, Cloud in certain degrees. If Cloud can't reach him, you switch to Barrett, you blast enemies to oblivion, and the enemies are uh, faithfully reproduced into modern uh, today's times, I should say. Sorry I'm getting excited, but this was like to me the best of E3 so far was Final Fantasy VII. The boss fight from the uh, reactor was reproduced greatly. I do mean really greatly. The music is there. And there's so many tactics. You can use debris as cover. Yes, they seriously modernized this game to the point that hopefully it wins some Game of Year awards. Final Fantasy VII did it once again, and it'll definitely do it in the episode one of the remake. So far, so good, Square Enix. You start out great, even better than Ubisoft's uh, Watch Dog Legions, and I love that game, and I would probably love you playing as Bad Grandpa uh, Hacker. So let's talk about the next game. Now, next up was more of a fan fest for a Life is Strange 2 trailer. Uh, they were showing that with the uh, cutscenes and the choices and more. I was looking at that, I was like, okay, this is not bad at all, but then I was thinking, is this, they're taking a uh, cue from Bethesda's uh, constant fan saying, I'm a fan of their games. I was like going, okay, please. You just had Final Fantasy VII, great momentum. Do not kill it. Hopefully, let's see if they could bring slightly back some momentum. Now, the next game is Final Fantasy uh, Crystal Chronicles uh, Remaster Edition. It was remastered from the GameCube uh, game many years ago. The game looks pretty good. It looks pretty great. They got some momentum back in that. Pretty fun gameplay trailer, too. If you're fans of the uh, Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicle game, you'll definitely enjoy it. What's great about it, it's not only coming to mobile, it's definitely coming to the PlayStation 4 and Switch. Yes, Switch fans, you're definitely getting some more games. So far, so good. So let's talk about the next one. Now, next up for the PC Elite, I mean uh, players, including just as myself, is Octopath Traveler. That was a Switch game that was heavily acclaimed, and many people loved it on the Switch. It's going to the PC. They not only show CGI, but also gameplay trailer. It looks like an old school uh, RPG game. Yes, the good old days. And believe me, Octopath Traveler did win some awards and acclaim. And they're starting to pick up some nice momentum Square Enix. Alright, I'm forgetting about the other conferences I uh, watched during the duration of this conference. Now, next up the bat is uh, Last Remnant Remastered from the uh, PlayStation 3 slash Xbox uh, 360 days. It was mostly a good uh, trailer. They did remaster before, I think, on the other systems. It's coming to the Switch. It's not bad at all. I'm going to be honest. I'm kind of glad Switch uh, players are getting games. Good games, in fact. If you're Switch owners and you need a... Good game that's on a discount like 10% or 25% uh, off. Yeah, I would grab this game. Now, next up in the uh, streak of uh, gameplay trailers. Yes, gameplay trailers, folks. Is Dragon Quest Builders 2. Not only CGI they started, they also showed so many uh, gameplay trailers. We could jump, dive, and glide. Yes, you can even swim in this game this time instead of uh, taking swimming water damage. Like, unlike uh, Dragon Quest Online Builders where you take water damage, this game you don't. You build more stuff, you have an ally, you can command NPCs build for you. You can tell uh, that one NPC and wear a mask with all muscle, you, go build my castle. Or you can tell the uh, uh, female villager, go, you, build my defenses. Yes, they did a great job of that, which is awesome. Also, you have an ally that helps out you out in single player. You could do team attacks together. The ally is very powerful. There's also a nice uh, MP mode. Yes, MP for multiplayer. Yes. This way, you and your friends can coordinate and build like crazy. Now, my only concern is, is uh, I kind of hope they uh, put that in the MP mode in the story. So this way, you could switch off. But I don't think so. But still, overall, it's going to be a great game right there. It's coming out July 12th. And I'm going to say Square Enix, bravo for that. Now, next up is uh, Drag Quest XI on the Switch. Looks like the action's going to be old school uh, Drag Quest style like you uh, play on the uh, DS. Yes, those DS Drag Quest games were awesome. 
4 through 6. Play those if you want to. They're very good. It, the uh, Dragon Quest XI game is a wonderful game. The trailer CGI, however, there is gameplay trailer. Yes, folks, gameplay trailer. It's a form of the old school DS ones, but still, it's a very good game overall. I did one or two uh, trophy slash tactical guides on the game. I advise getting it if you're Switch users. Dragon Quest XI was wonderful. The story was great. You should, everybody should enjoy that game. If you're a Switch owner, like I said before, go buy it. So far, so good. The show's doing great. Next up the bat is Kingdom Hearts 3 Remind. Uh, it's a DLC for Kingdom Hearts 3. You get to play as Aqua and Roxas. Now, Aqua is a very powerful person to play as. Now, Roxas was not bad at all. Still, that was a good uh, DLC to get, but still, I would advise uh, waiting for a sale on it, like I said in my review. Yeah, I was kind of hoping they had a DLC for a certain character that should have been playable, but still, not bad for Kingdom Hearts to have a nice uh, DLC package. Now, next up the bat is uh, Final Fantasy XIV Online Expansion Pack uh, Shadowbringers. It's coming out July 2nd. It's your typical uh, new raid, new foes to defeat. Gameplay was not bad at all, so if you're a uh, Final Fantasy uh, XIV fan, that's pretty good. I was kind of glad at this point, momentum slightly picked up more from the Kingdom Hearts DLC. Now, next up the bat is Dying Light 2, Techland's uh, game. Yes, Dying Light 2. Now, this was announced at Microsoft's E3. They All they showed was a CGI trailer. However, they did show some, some nice gameplay. I'm guessing Microsoft told them, we want CGI. CGI only. Square Enix says, oh, you guys can do some gameplay. Go ahead. And guess what? That's going to be a pretty good game, Dying Light 2. As I said before, daytime you deal with humans, nighttime you deal with zombies, and your butt is on a timer. So let's talk about the next two they're bringing in from Japan. Next up they're uh, bringing from uh, Japan Square Enix is uh, Romancing Saga 3 and Saga Scarlet Grace Ambitions. Now both of them have different uh, story uh, paths you could take, so no two stories are uh, alike. Romantic sagas from the old days, why uh, the uh, other one's more a little bit of a modern spin to it, modern times. I'm gonna be honest with you, they're both not bad. I'm kind of glad Square Enix is bringing both games to the uh, United States and uh, Europe and beyond. So bravo Square Enix for that try. Now next up was Final Fantasy Brave Exodus and also uh, Final Fantasy Brave Exodus War of the Visions. They both are like mobile games, look like they're alright. I'm not sure if they're coming to the consoles or PC. Still, it was an alright section. A uh, little bit bump on the roadmap to perfection. Now, next up is uh, Outriders. Uh, they showed a uh, CGI trailer mainly. Yeah, they just announced it, put some CGI in there. It was an alright game, not bad. They showed the weapons, so it's either going to be a first person or a third person shooter most likely. I don't know which. Kind of wish they had a little bit of alpha footage or even a, a five a minute uh, demo of it, but still, it's coming out summer 2020 of next year, so yeah, it's alright so far. Now, next up on the list is Okinawi, which is an action RPG game coming out August 22nd. That game's going to look awesome, I believe. Uh, it's, it looks like it's going to be a very fun game to do. I mean, if you're in those type of games, they're gonna have, people are going to have fun doing it, so Square Enix is doing good in their part in this E3 uh, presentation. Now, next up on the list I'm going to briefly touch up on is uh, Final Fantasy VIII Remaster Edition. They remastered the uh, game from the PlayStation 1 days, and also on the PC a year later. So I'm going to say, it's not a bad game, Final Fantasy VIII uh, they remastered. It's not one of my uh, favorite ones. I kind of wanted the one... Uh, Gal to die in space. Still, it's not bad at all they're remastering that since some people love that. So let's talk about the last and final game on the list. Next up on the list is uh, Crystal Dynamics Avengers game. Yeah, so Crystal Dynamics Square Enix and Marvel uh, Games got together and they decided to uh, collaborate on the Avengers uh, game and Avengers uh, universe. Oh boy, that CGI trailer was great. Oh my goodness. This is how you end the show, folks. Only thing I was slightly disappointed was no gameplay trailer, but still, you have Iron Man, you have Captain America, Thor, the Incredible Hulk, and Black Widow. 
And then during the course of the show, they're explaining on what their jobs are, each of them. So something tells me you either switch to them or uh, you somewhat uh, play as them at a certain point in the game. The uh, voice acting is your uh, AAA voice acting from other games such as Uncharted, The Last of Us, such as Troy Baker, uh, Lauren Bailey, Nolan North. The game is going to be great and wonderful. I mean, they set themselves up for a wonderful su success. And personally, it's going to be a very fun game over there. This is how you end the show, just like how you start the show. Now, here's my uh, review and final thoughts of the Square Enix E3 press conference. I'm going to give it 9 out of 10. Yes, folks, they did a wonderful job of excellent fillers such as uh, Octopath Traveler for the PC, uh, Dragon Quest uh, Builders 2, uh, Dragon Quest 11, and more. And they even had great start and finish, such as Final Fantasy VII Remake and the Avengers game. Yes, they start out great and wonderful. They had a few bumps in the road like Meyer, but they picked themselves up. They show gameplay more than uh, CGI trailers. Yes, Square Enix did a wonderful job of that. It makes you want to buy their games more and more. So that's it for my uh, day three presentation of Ubisoft and Square Enix's uh, E3 press conferences. This is the Lord Fit signing off. Please like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.